Hi everyone, this will be a two-part video series where I go over turning a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus into a dedicated security camera viewer. So for my use case, I recently mounted this TV up here, uh, really so I could watch YouTube from the bench, if I'm being honest. But I thought, wouldn't it be really cool if I could look at all my home security cameras on it on one of the HDMI inputs? And so that led me down the rabbit hole of taking a spare Raspberry Pi 3 I had and figuring out how to display all four cameras on it when I plugged in the HDMI. So in this first part, we'll go over the software I used and the approach I took uh, on the Pi itself. And then in the second part, we'll go over routing a new ethernet line from this switch over here, all the way up this trunk of lines I already have. We'll go over here through a bunch of these beams, and then we'll get a new ethernet jack installed behind the TV that will use PoE over the ethernet to power the Pi, and it'll just sit there and be a dedicated camera viewer. So in my case, I happen to have a Ubiquiti UNVR, and it can stream over something called RTSP. I think most network attached video recorders can use this. I happen to have a UNVR in my network rack across the basement over there. And I'll go over first how to set up RTSP on a UNVR because that's what I have. And then we'll dive into the software. Okay, so the first thing we'll need to do is log in to the UNVR and go to the Protect app. We'll head over to Devices. And you can see in my case, I have four cameras open up the settings and we can go over to manage. And in the manage section, you'll see an RTSP dropdown. And so you can turn on the quality of the stream you want. I've already turned on low. That seemed to be good enough for my use case with this TV I showed you earlier. And so this is where you're gonna get the URLs we'll use in the next step to tell the Raspberry Pi where to get this, this stream of video from. And it's, as you might expect, I've turned them on for all my cameras. Keep these URLs handy because we'll be plugging them in to the next step when we set up the Pi and run through the software. All right, so on the bottom right here, we have the HDMI out coming right out of the Raspberry Pi. It's running through an HDMI capture card so I can show it to you on the screen here. And on the left is my local terminal. I just SSH'd into the Raspberry Pi. It's got a fresh image of the Raspberry Pi OS Lite uh, with SSH turned on, of course, and it's plugged into Ethernet, and that's it. Haven't done anything else to this guy. So the first thing we'll do, of course, is update, and we will upgrade this guy. All right, so now we have a Raspberry Pi that's up to date and ready to have some stuff installed. So we're going to need two utilities to use this little guy as a dedicated RTSP viewer, and they are screen and OMX player. So we'll go ahead and install them and I'll go over how we're going to use them. Okay. And then this next part is optional, but I will also be installing Vim because that's how I like to edit files on a Linux machine. Okay, so now we have everything we need, namely OMX player and screen. And the strategy here is that OMX player will let us stream an RTSP feed and show it on the Raspberry Pi's HDMI out. So this is the basic command. So OMX player, we will give it a coordinate. So this part's pretty important and we'll go into the greater detail here, but it's starting X, starting Y, ending X, ending Y. So this is gonna draw a box starting from the upper left of the screen that's 940 wide and 540 pixels tall. Uh, and this next part is saying stream an RTPS stream from this URL. And so this is one of those URLs I showed you earlier when we were looking at the UNVR. And so basically if we run this, we'll see on the Raspberry Pi screen that it's showing one of my cameras. So that feed happens to be a camera from my smaller garage and it's showing it in the upper left as I described, starting at zero, zero in the upper left going 940 to the right and 540 to the bottom. And so basically we want to do this four times, uh, but you'll see that if I run OMX player, I'm stuck. So I can't run any more commands. And when I kill that one, my camera goes away. And so the strategy here is that we'll leverage something called screen to kick off an OMX player process a few times and give us control back to the console 
so that we can do more stuff. So as an example, here's that same command, but ran with screen. So I'll leave uh, all the arguments and everything and exactly what's going on here as an exercise to the user. Screen is very well documented, but basically I can say, do that same thing with something called screen and I have full control now. So I'm back. And what this means is that I can repeat this for all the cameras I want. So if I take another screen command, now I've got two cameras showing and you get the idea. And so now with these basic building blocks, we have OMX player that can stream our video feed to the HDMI out of the Raspberry Pi. And we have screen that can let us start multiple instances of OMX player and have them running at the same time. And I should also mention that another nice, nice aspect of OMX player is that it starts a process called OMX player bin that streams these video feeds to the screen. And so if I want to get rid of them all, I can simply say kill all OMX player bin. And that gives us a nice way to get rid of everything or kind of restart everything we want to do with these basic building blocks we can use a service that starts up when the Raspberry Pi starts at boot to show all our cameras at once, and this can become a dedicated RTSP viewer. We're going to leverage a utility called systemd, which is a Linux tool that lets you create services that can you can start and stop on demand, or in our use case here, start when the computer has booted up. And so to do that, we will create a new one. And these are typically loaded at located at Etsy system D system. And then we will create one called UNVR dash cams dot service. And so we have a new file here. So I'll paste in my pre-written service definition file here, and we'll walk through all of these pieces. So we'll start in the service section here on line five. Basically when this thing is told to start, we can tell it to execute a command. And when it's told to stop, we can tell it to execute another command. So in our case, we're going to say, when you're told to start, call this bash script that's located at user local bin UNVR cams. This script doesn't exist yet, but we'll go create it right after this. And that's where we're going to put all our screen and OMX player commands. When you start up, run it as the user Pi, because that's our user, the default user on the Raspberry Pi OS. And when you're told to stop, run kill all OMX player, the example I showed you earlier where it just kills all the camera feeds. And so the really important thing for us that systemd provides is it can run our service at a certain point in the boot process. And so on line three, we're saying when you're booting up and told to run, only run after we have network. And that's really important because all of our camera feeds are coming over the network via RTSP. And so if this wasn't here or we were just naively trying to uh, bootstrap in our bash script that starts up these cameras right when the Raspberry Pi boots up, we might not have network and the feeds would just fail and the OMX player commands would fail and it wouldn't work. And so systemd gives us a really nice sort of lifecycle management built in that lets us only start when the network's ready and systemd just takes care of that. And so that's our service file. And so let's go ahead and go create that bash file that our service is going to call. And so that was that user local bin UNVR cams dot S H. Okay. So I'll walk you through what's happening here. So right up just to be, I don't know, extra cautious. We kill all the cameras that might exist because we know we're about to start four more. And then we start top left, top right, bottom left with screen so that we can get control back and run more commands. And then the very last one, this is sort of a sneaky little thing we're doing to keep systemd happy. We actually just run the OMX player command bare. We don't use screen. And the reason for this is when systemd starts up and runs your command you told it to run, it expects the process to sit there. It doesn't expect the process to return and exit and die. And screen will just return. Systemd will think something went wrong and keep trying to restart the service. And so in our case, we'll We'll start up our three screen calls and that'll start three cameras. And on the last one, we'll just do the bare OMX player, of course, with the right coordinates here. And that'll start up our bottom right camera. System D will be happy and it'll sit there running. And so we can go ahead and save that. Okay. And so if that went well, we should be able to just call this bash script directly. 
So if I go like that, and sure enough, you can see all four cameras show up in the right spot. And this is what our system D script is going to call and what it will see. Before going any further, I wanted to do a quick aside on how the coordinate system for the OMX player command works. Most computer graphics coordinate systems start in the upper left of the screen and call this pixel location 00, zero and then move right along the x-axis and down along the y-axis. Knowing this, let's say we have four cameras that we'd like to draw on a 1920 by 1080 pixel screen. We'll go over each OMX player coordinate setting one by one here, and I'll put the resulting coordinates we need for the player command in each camera box. The upper left camera will begin at starting x0 and starting y0, and end at ending x960 and ending y540. We get 960 and 540 because we only want the camera boxes to go half the width of our screen and half the height of our screen. So we end up passing 0, 0, 960, 540 to OMX player. Continuing from there, the upper right camera will begin at starting x960, starting y0, and end at ending x1920, ending y540. So we'll pass 960, 0, 1920, 540 to OMX player. The bottom left camera will begin at starting x0, starting y540, and end at ending x960 and ending y1080. We'll pass 0, 540, 960, 1080 to OMX player for this one. To fill the rest of the screen, our bottom right camera will begin at starting x960, starting y540, and end at ending x1920 and ending y1080. So we'll pass 960, 540, 1920, 1080 to the OMX player command. Hopefully you're still with me and that helps explain all the coordinates I'm talking about in the OMX player commands. And with that out of the way, let's get back to the software setup. The first thing you need to do to get your systemd service running is run system control. So system CTL or system control is the utility that lets you interact and start, stop, enable, disable services that systemd has under its purview. So the first thing we need to do is a daemon reload to tell it, hey, I wrote a new service on the disk. You should go look for it. And then we can actually do systemctl start unvr camps. And so in one moment, there we go. That is systemd calling our bash script and starting up our four cams. Uh, and just to reiterate what's going on here, we can stop it as well, goes away. And our very last step here is to tell systemd enable UNVR cams. And what this will do is actually cause our service that we just wrote to be initiated at Raspberry Pi boot. So we can actually issue a reboot command here and in the screen on the bottom right, we'll see the Raspberry Pi is gonna go through its, its reboot loop, it'll start initializing. And after it gets to the login screen and has network uh, available to it, we should see all of our cameras show up. There's the login screen. And there's our cameras. And so this is awesome because every time I plug in this Raspberry Pi and it has network, it's just going to show these four cameras. And this is perfect for the use case on the TV I showed you earlier because now I can go install the Raspberry Pi over there with a power cord and an ethernet jack. I don't have to hook it up to a monitor every time to configure all this to get it just right and then go you know, run it over there and plug it into the TV. It'll just do all this by itself right when it starts up. And so that's the software side. All these things I pasted and the and the console commands I, I ran in the terminal there, I'll put those in the description, probably in GitHub just links or something so that you can try it out yourself. And so now we'll move on to the install. So that wraps up the software piece. And in the next video, we'll run that new ethernet line and get the Pi permanently installed behind the TV over there so that when it boots up, it always just shows those cameras on one of the HDMI inputs. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.